Hello and welcome again back to Cooking in the Kitchen with DC Coast to Coast and Boom Chang Records. I'm Stephen Paul Cunningham and today I have a very, very special guest which I'm really excited about. So much that I even hoovered up today for him coming. We've got Trevor Sewell, blues extraordinaire. Um, well renowned in this local area of the northeast, been doing music for a lot of years and we're going to have a little chat with him now. Good morning. Good morning, Steve. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling a bit more awake now. You've woken up a little bit. A little bit, yeah. I know these blues guys, you know, you know what they like, these blues guys, they're up all night. Yeah, that's right, uh, I, yeah. But I done got up this morning. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, can you just talk to us a little bit about your background? Because I know you from many years ago. Yeah. Obviously studios, when we've mingled together throughout different studios in the Northeast, we've connected, not worked together, uh -huh. certainly connected over the years. And I'm just outstanding where you, you've gone now through what you did in them days. Just talk us through what you've done. Yeah, well, I mean, because I've been around for quite a long time, I've been through like a lot of the, um, a lot of the different sort of scenes. And I think I first met you when I was in Erogenous Zones. Right. Um, which was been like about the 80s or something, or the, or the end of the 70s. Yeah. Um, and then I, I went off and I joined a, a band called The Revills. I, I was with them for wow. a few years. Fantastic. And I got a new name then. I was Max Atom. Max Atom? Max Atom, yeah. Where did you get that name? Uh, because the, when, the, when they actually phoned up, they said, uh, said oh, uh, you've got the job. I said, oh, great. They said, we've got your flat. I said, oh, great. They said, your name's Max Atom. <laughs> I said, oh, all right then. It's like, so it was definitely a two out of three, but it's like... <laughs> That's a good so, name, actually. Well, it's, it's sort of all right, except when you're in hotels, and the, they used to check us in under the name of Max Adam. Did they? Yeah, so I used to have to go if I wanted to be key. Uh, have you got a key for... Uh, what's your name? Uh, it might be under Rivellos. Uh, yeah, but what's your name? Uh, Max. Yeah, but what's your second name? Um, Adam. <laughs> Hey, this bloke's called Max Adam. <laughs> <laughs> so it got it got really um, it, it got really odd like that. But having said that, eventually I, I sussed out. I could say, "Can I have a key for Mr. Adams?" And they say, "You never guess what they've uh, put down here." Yeah, I say, "What they've got, they've got you down as Adam, Adam." <laughs> like, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so you got it right for you anyway. At the end I did, of the yeah. Day. Right, so it's uh, right. That well, that, that's pretty good. I mean. So that, that's a bit different style to what you're doing now. Totally different, yeah. Um, I mean, I actually did a, a gig with, uh, with, with some of the Revillos a little while back in London, and I, and I did one with, uh, for the, the Polyfest right. uh, for Polystyrene right. um, about two and a half months ago, so we lad down the, the Half Moon at Putney, yeah. and the, with Nicky from the, the Revillos. He's got a, the, the drummer, he's got a band called The Road Holders now. Right. Who are really, really good, you know? Uh -huh. um, so I, I, still, I still have a... a an affinity with that whole that whole scene. That you know? scene, yeah. Well, that's all sort of come back around again, hasn't it? It has, yes. Yeah, do I mean, do you think Green Day have regenerated that sort of scene, or what? Do you, you know that, do, that? Who do you think's who's brought it back? I mean, I know there's a few other bands of that scene have come come back out and they're touring again. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's some bands that have been around. I think all the time, like Stiff Little Fingers and, yeah. and, and people like that. You know, um, but. Well, um, we'll give a big shout out to Jake from Stiff Little Fingers. Ah, right. He's a Newcastle United fan as well, you know. Is he? Oh, well, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, Great. Yeah. Well, I'm a Stiff Little Fingers fan as yeah. well, actually. They're not so. bad, are they? <laughs> They're all right, like, <laughs> I, uh, but particularly now I know that Jake's actually a Newcastle fan. That, that makes me uh, better. Uh, it certainly does, like, yeah. you know. Um, so, um, yeah, um, but there's, there's, there's a lot of, lot of those bands sort of touring now, I think, which uh -huh. is, which is I, think it's really, I think it's really good because I remember when that whole scene started, and I was really undecided about it because I was part of the scene before it, you right. know. Um, and after, but after about six months or something like that, I thought, oh, this is great. This, you know, it was exciting going to gigs again. And yeah. so, so it was, uh, yeah, well, all good, all oh, good. That's good stuff. I can't remember what the original question was now, Steve. I've just waffled on so much. I wouldn't even worry about it because <laughs> it all makes sense to me. It's, we've established that you started in, in more the sort of punk area. Yeah. You're doing blues predominantly now. Yeah. And you've got a very odd looking instrument here. Um, as the actress, no, no. I, <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it, it is a daytime show. Uh, yes, I know, I know, I realise. You know, if I could have brought that one back, because uh, oh, oh, it's one take, isn't it? I, oh, well, well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, this is, um, this is a, it's actually called a cigar box guitar, and it is actually a real cigar box. I don't know if you can see that there. That's unbelievable. When it's just got like a plank of wood bolted through it. Is it? Um, so it's like yeah, that's the that's the end of the neck there. So it looks it's a plank of wood in a, a cigar box. Yeah. 
And you've even got a sharpshooter on the front of it. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you Dan, I don't know if you can see that image there. Just show Dan the uh, the image yeah. there. Nice little sharpshooter there. Yeah. Has, he, has he got a name? Um, I've no idea. He probably has. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, Quinton did, or something did, like did, that. Yeah, yeah, something like Malcolm. Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that, that is what it's called now. It's like, yeah, I like, I like that. We'll, we'll go with Malcolm, I think. Yeah. Um, this, was, um, this was made... I, I, I actually wanted to get a hold of one of these. Um, and you can buy kits for them, you can make them really cheap. Right. But I, I, I decided that I wanted it to be a musical instrument as well, because if, uh -huh. if I'd got one of those kits and made it, it would have been a chest of drawers by would the time it? it was finished, you know. <laughs> um, so I got, uh, I got recommended to a bloke called Chicken Bone John. Right. Who uh, comes from, obviously... With an Sunderland. Uh, no, oh, God, no, no. <laughs> Come on, let's see. Chicken Bone John. Nottingham. Right. Right, so... Um, <laughs> uh, and I went, I went on his website, and obviously everyone's a one-off because you can probably tell it's not like mass-produced one, you know? Right. And I saw this one, it was the only one there, so I thought, well, I'll have to take a chance on it. Yeah. And I always remember um, when, I, when it arrived, the, the look on my wife's face, because I got it out and she went, oh, my God, what have you been getting now, you know? Right. And I says, oh, right, and she, but she sort of quite liked it, I think, right. like, you know? And I thought, I'll have to really work the get a sound out of it, it looks all right, you know. It, it's got a great look about it. Yeah. But what's it actually sound like? I well, mean... I, I thought I would have to, like, sort of really sort of struggle to get a sound out of it. Yeah. I plugged it in my hand, it sounded great, it so I, did, I had to do nothing at all with it. So, Chicken Bone John, I don't know if John's his real name. Yeah. Um, Chicken, Chicken Bone John from Nottingham did a fantastic job on this, so it's it's great, you know, I plug it in, I get all the credit for it. Excellent. Fine, that suits me. All right. <laughs> well, do you want to give us a little tune on it? No, no, no. Do you oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. What's this song about? This one. Um, this one is about a train. It's actually. Um, it's actually an anti-drug song. Right. Funnily enough, really? um, not a lot of people know that, but it's like the, the metaphor is the train in it. Right. Um, about how it's easy to get on the train, but not so easy to get off when it's moving. When it's moving, yeah. But it's sort of like got a bit of a. A positive spin, like you, you get the impression. It's not about a great bio, but it's not about me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you sort of get the idea that uh, the the person that it's about is like sort of got things a bit more under control, you know. Hopefully. Right. Uh, when you're ready, train. just go for it. Just lost control for a little 
It, it was moving on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, <that's laughs> exciting stuff and from a cigar box. It's um it's a great great little thing. Like I would definitely recommend Chicken Bone John. Definitely. I'm well that's right. brilliant. <laughs> so you've got what one song, the train, you do that? Do you use it on an album much? Have you got an album out recently or? Uh, yeah, that's off the independence album and the train actually has won it's won quite a few awards for us. Uh, has it? Um in America, and it was it was shortlisted in the British Blues Awards as well. Oh, get so in. it's uh, it's been it's been a, been a good one to us, like you know? yeah, very much. Well, that connection between you and that, and it's obviously getting you a little bit of recognition, which is brilliant. Yeah, it's, uh, how, how do you get into doing that? I mean, you've connected with the states, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're from the UK, right? Yeah. And you've travelled, I guess, all over the world as a musician, well, or you've travelled bits of it, bits of it, yeah. <laughs> um, blues predominantly. It's from the States, right? Yeah. And it's generally around people's sadness, I guess, blues. Yeah, is it? It's, it's, it, it is sort of about that, but it's also a bit of a celebration as well, I think. Right. You know, it's like, that's sort of the way I, I sort of uh -huh. I like look at a, a, a lot of the things as well, you know. Right. Um, out of people's misfortunes generally come the songs or... Yeah, and it was the, the spirit that sort of uh, got people through times like that, you know. Yeah. And you connected with that, how How did you get into that? Because obviously the punk scene uh -huh. to end up doing blues now and actually winning awards well, the, for doing well, blues from the UK. Yeah. Well, and it's a predominantly American thing, how's that happen? Well, it's, uh, when I very first started, the, the album that got me started playing guitar was John Mayall with Eric Clapton and the Blues Breakers album, the one where he's reading the Beano on the front. Right. Um, I hadn't played a guitar before and my brother brought the album in and, and sort of put it on and I just remember the, the first few bars of All Your Love, the first track on it yeah. and I thought that's great, I've got to do that, you know, where can I get a guitar from, you know. Right. Um, so I started off playing sort of blues, I mean my, my three favourite albums of all time I think are certainly the ones that shaped my guitar playing were Blues Breakers, um, Are You Experienced by Jimi Hendrix and the Burglar album uh, by Freddie King. Right. Um, so basically what happened is that I've played a lot of, a lot of different things over the years, and it was just 2011 or thereabouts where I thought, ah, oh, do you know, I think I'll just go and record something that I, that I fancy doing. Yeah. So I didn't have any, any market, nothing planned, not, nothing at all, wasn't going to put it out. I just thought, I'm just going to do something just for the sake of doing the music. And what I did is I, dis I rediscovered why I learned how to play in the first place. Oh, wow. Because I liked it. It was nothing to do with like earning a living or anything like that. Yeah. So um, I just went in and I just, I made the call in the name album and that got a number one on the, the American Blue Scene chart. Yeah. Um, which was like really surprising and that won a couple of awards as well in, in Hollywood. So it's sort of, it's, what I, what I do now is it's, it's, I'm back where I was when I was 13 or, or whatever like that. I just play because I like it and, mm. and I just put what I fancy on the albums and it's, and it's great, you know, that the fact that it's yeah. got us somewhere is like, 
absolutely blooming astounding, you know. It's, it's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, I, I think that's, it. A, that's a lesson for a lot of people today. The music industry, as you know, has changed massively mm -hmm. from absolutely. when we were in it as, as young people, you know. Um, the internet obviously allows people to drive it in their own way. That's Connections are made fantastic. better. And the fact that you've got your own independence, shall mm -hmm. we say. Yeah, I like that. Did you I like see, what I, did I, see, what, I see what you did there, Steve, um, yes. Just, just <laughs> to, to let you get on and do what you want to do. Yeah. And make music for you. Because well, you're but, happy doing it. Also, because yeah. it's a technology as well these days that um, when, you know, like a lot of years ago, you used to have to save up to go in and do like three demos or something like that. Now, because you, cause I record my albums in the house anyway. Right. Um, apart from one of, one of the albums. Um, but uh, we're, you, you know, we've got the technology where we can go and record and we can take a little bit of time over it yep. and it doesn't cost us an arm and a leg, you know, it does, maybe it's just a set up when you, when you first do, but you do that, you know, I've been, I've, right. it's, I've taken 25 years or something to set up a studio. Collect bits here, there and there. Yeah, 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 it's like, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's, we're just really lucky that the internet's enabled us to do that as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know there's like the internet also means that, uh, you know, like sort of like the, the sales and stuff like that, you know, people can swap MP3s, but I don't care about that, you know. Yeah. Like, to be honest, I, I, give a, I give away a lot of them anyway, you know. Right. Um, because it's You want just, people to hear your music, it's engaging, it, you know, great, yeah. great stories. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's like, I think people listen to music is, is really, is just, it's really good because it's something I didn't expect. Yeah. Um, I thought it would just be me yeah. and everybody else in the house <laughs> that unwillingly has to do it while I'm recording it. Well, that's right, they, the family goes through the whole process with Oh, two blooming right, yeah. Whether they want to or not. Yeah, if I come downstairs, I can say, like, hey, do you want to hear my new song? Heard it a thousand, a thousand times. times. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you go about writing? What to um, that, basically? Well, I, I sort of write um, in, in a few different ways. Like, normally I just pick up stuff and just sort of start strumming. I mean, I can be watching the telly. Uh, and I've got, I'll have my phone and I'll think, all right, I've got a bit of an idea. And I'll just, doesn't matter whether the telly's on in the background or if I'm talking to people in the room or anything like that, you know, like if my me, if me grandkids are there or whatever. Um, I'll just start sort of, I'll, I'll take a little bit of a note down there because it's only for me to remind us if I've sort of come up with, with something there. Right then. Um, I mean, the, the, the first single I was, I, I ever had out was in the 80s with the Roger and Stones. And I wrote that to my foot in the van when somebody was, I was waiting for somebody at the shops. Right. And I just thought yeah. I should go this speed, and I, I remember sort of singing the, the single, yeah. and then going back and working out what the chords would be. Right. So it's you know it can sort of be like any time. I write all the time anyway, you know. So yeah, make notes and maybe come back to it later or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's, it's sometimes sometimes you get a surprise. I've got I've got one track on uh, on, the, on the last album called Condemned, and that that was like because I quite often. I've, Loads of ideas about on on my phone and on my laptop and things, and I quite often don't go back and listen to them again, you know. Yeah. And I actually, I went back and listened to that one. I thought, oh, I wonder what that one is. And it was pretty much the whole song, you know. I sort of just sat there and just sort of pretty much sang it through, and I right. had to go and write a few more words and things. But, um, but I, I, I don't I don't really overanalyze things. I just like sort of just get on with it. Get on know? with it, yeah. Yeah. Well, do you fancy getting on with another song? I do, do I do indeed. Another one? Yeah. Right, um, what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I'll remove this one from... Put it wherever you uh, want. Oh, actually, what, uh, um, I know what I can do, I can put it on there. Will it fit? Um, <laughs> as the... <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. You're so tempted, <laughs> aren't you? I know, I know, it's like, but at least I stopped myself there, sort of, like, and even... Um, so what we've got here, then? Right, um, this is a song of... Uh, of my unplugged album, I, I did an album at Capitol Records in, uh, in Hollywood. You, right, I'm going to put that there for you. One second. Tell me. Just do it yourself. Do it yourself. So anyway, you mentioned the word Hollywood there. What did you I say? Did. Oh yeah. Um, when I was last time I was out in Hollywood, uh, which was April, um, I did. I, I was out there uh, for an awards thing, um, which the train one actually, which was which was really good. Um, but also to do some recording at Capitol Records. Right. Um, that where, must have been fantastic. Because uh, there's it's so much great. history, isn't it? I mean, America just carries his history with yeah, the sort you, of music we love, isn't it? Yeah, do you know, it was, like, it was just, it was great because, I mean, like, everybody's been in there, like, you know, and, it's, and they were so nice to us. They were, they were, yeah, they were, yeah. They were great, like, you know. And it was, yeah, it's very iconic, you know. It's, um, but also they've got great engineers, you know. It's right. like, so what, what I was actually doing in there, I was doing some, uh, some vocals for, for my next electric album. 
Uh, and when they set the acoustic up, I just had my headphones on, and I thought, because like I say, they've got great engineers, I thought, yeah. God, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, you know, for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just said that when I'm sitting here, can I do, can I do an acoustic album? And he just, he just like laughed, you know, he, went, he says, yeah, he says, yeah, go on then. So I says, all right, and so I says, tell us when I've got 10. And I just sat there and it was, uh, I had no idea what I was going to do. I just- That's amazing, so you actually just went in there to I do- I just did it live, yeah. And, yeah. and it was, um, and oddly enough, the, the, there's one track on it that I wasn't going to use, because um, there was a couple of tracks on it that, that I sort of didn't really know very well, but I, I recorded them anyway. Yeah. And there's one I thought, I don't know if I'll use that one or not. And I came back and I played it with a few people because originally I wasn't going to put the album out in the first place. Right. Um, and everybody seemed to say, oh yeah, you should, you should put this out. And, uh, oh, that track's a really good one. Right. And I thought, is it? So it finished up as being, it finished up being the title track for the tr but if it hadn't been for us uh, playing it to a few people, it would never have made it onto the, the thing. In the well, that's the thing, and I think for us as musicians as well, if you're hearing something that you're enjoying, you don't want to stop, do you? That's you, right, yeah. You want to keep on going. Anyway, let's not talk anymore. Let's hear okay. one of these lovely songs. I let's told you once again, it's talking, it's your fault. <laughs> it's me, I talk too much as well. <laughs> Okay, four hours later, <laughs> and the leaves fell off the trees, and no, and the snow came. Okay, right. Okay, uh, this is the title track of the uh, Face to Face album, which is not surprisingly called Face to Face. Right. Yeah. I don't know where this is going, but there's something. I must say Tried so many times to make this right But you just turned me away And when I tried to raise the subject You tell me it's all in my mind Well we both know That, that just ain't the case Let's do this face to face Face to face I wanna look into your eyes I wanna see what lies behind Face to face I wanna look into your soul I wanna see you look in my eyes Yeah, we both know that that just ain't the case Let's do this face to face Face to face, I wanna know just where I stand Do I still figure in your plans? Face to face, I wanna look into your eyes I wanna see you looking me Now I know where this is going And though it's not the road I choose I'm in no place to make conditions known Guess I'll leave it up to you Now tell me face to face I wanna know what lies behind that smile I wanna hear the truth you hide Face to face, I want to look into your eyes I want to see you looking in mine I want to see you looking in mine Face to face Whoa, get in there man That's Thank beautiful, you. that <laughs> Thank you. That's Really uh, different from the first song you played. I don't know. 
<laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> Don't know really. <laughs> hey, that's beautiful, that trailer. Really, really nice. I love that. Oh, thank you very much. Excellent. Nice. Right. Speechless. <laughs> actually, that um, the, the album that's from um, were actually for one night only because we had such a great 2014. We're actually giving that away um, oh, yeah. uh, at the Clooney gig. Right. Fantastic. I just remembered that one. Oh, the Clooney gig. <laughs> oh, what's Clooney gig? That one. When's that? <laughs> oh, that might be next Friday. Actually, thinking about it. Friday the 30th of January. Um, 2015. Got, uh, it's, it's what? 2015. 2015. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's as well to be to. <laughs> to cross the eyes and no, that's, that's right. all of that stuff, isn't it? Yeah, 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 something like that. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's another two great bands on as well. We've got Rebecca Downs on. Right. Rebecca Downs is great, and she's actually she's getting loads and loads of airplay and, uh, and just a, well, just if I be so, she's from Birmingham. Right. Uh, she's coming up, and there's Jake Fletcher, who's a singer songwriter from up here, right. who's a young lad who's doing great. Uh, right. So. It'll be a really good night, and we're making a live album out of it as well. So it's all getting it's recorded. It's all go, isn't it? It's all go. So you get a free, a free uh, digi pack, face to face Hollywood CD yeah. with the entrance fee, which is eight quid. Yeah, but you've got three acts on, so yeah, there's a good night, free CD. I think so. It makes yeah. it worthwhile, and, and it's good for people to get back to live music as well, isn't it? So it's great. Now, I love playing at Clooney. You know, yeah. we've, we've done it twice now, and it's uh, it's been great. You know, so. and it works quite well for you. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely, lovely gig. I think you were there last time. Didn't you? I did come last time, yeah. And I think that was our reconnection point, wasn't it? Well, actually, I, I, when we reconnected on that blooming flight, didn't we? We did, yeah. Come back from the states, actually. And it was like, oh, what are you doing here? And it's like, I've been to Hollywood, and it's like, really? Yeah, are you in the movies? <laughs> <laughs> all the time, all yeah, the time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's funny where we meet, isn't it? I know. I know. As people like anyway, but um, that's excellent. So you got the Clooney gig. Yeah. That's all coming up. Uh, rest of stuff for this year. What else is going to happen this year for you? Well, there's a load of stuff. Um, I've just got to think what it is. First of all, I'm, I'm, there's, a, there's, a, there's a few things come up uh, as a result of uh, some things that I was doing with it, actually with it, with the Grammys um, yeah. in America. So I've got, I'm playing on a, a couple, of, couple of albums and some, I'm collaborating with a few people there. That must have opened um, up a lot of doors for you to work with other musicians. It's opened so. up an, an, an enormous amount. To be honest, it's like this, this year so far, I've been working every single day and pretty much most nights just on stuff for, for America. And it's, uh -huh. that's not including me, the album, because I've had to That's outstanding. That. That's absolutely yeah. brilliant for you, it's, that like. It's just, been, it's just been great. I, could, I, I couldn't believe it, you know. It's like, uh, so I got, got the first round, yeah. but um, I didn't make it to the to the final nominees thing, yeah. but I met so many people. But who, um, who, 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 were, who were you up against? Um, well, I'll tell you some of the others that didn't get through. Um, yeah. Robert Cray didn't. Right, um, Robert Cray. Yeah, and C6, he's famous for? Um, pretty much everything. Oh, yeah, <laughs> in the blue scene. Yeah, um, of course, yeah. Joe Bonamassa. Right, um, he's very popular across the scene, isn't he? He is, yeah. yeah. Johnny Winter got through, and right. um, I, I hope Johnny Winter wins it, actually. Right. Um, who else was it? Oh, there was there was loads and John Mayle. Um, uh -huh. So that there was there was like a, lo a lot of people. I couldn't believe it when I saw the list because it's like that was like the, the sort yeah. of longer list. But when I saw it, I thought, wow, that's uh, I, w I was just really chuffed to have got that far with it, you know. When I was reading through some of your blog stuff that you do, and which you should tell people actually at some stage how to connect with you. All oh, right, trevorsewell.com. That's the one. What does it tell them again? They ever go. go. Trevorsewell.com is the website, and I've got a couple of Facebooks. Um, I've got Trevor Sewell Music on Facebook, but actually, a lot of people, in fact, more people seem to have defaulted to me, my personal one, which is, I'm fine with that, you know, it's, which is Trev.Sewell, but um, you, I've got, you've got me mugshot on there. Do you, anyway, tweet you can tell it to me. I do, tw I do tweet. Do you? Yeah, but I, I tweet by default, really, to be no, honest. It's, it's if, my Facebook tweets for us because I still don't quite understand the, the Twitter thing yet. Yeah. Like, um, uh, you, you, you'll grasp it and it, it sort of it grows, doesn't it? You start off with a little bit and go, oh, how does this work? It, it, it does, you know, it, ha it has sort of grown and, um, and it, it's, it is quite, it's quite nice when, like, cause I, I do get retweets now as well. Yeah. Um, which is uh, which is great. So I'm, I'm but I don't, I'm, I'm not a really active no. tweeter. It's a balanced thing, which we've always said. It's either too much, too little, or you just got to get it right. You know? Yeah, it's all about getting the herbs and spices right, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, one thing I'd like <laughs> to ask you about is something as I was reading on one of your blogs, which I was coming to, was that somebody'd heard you on the radio in the states, one of your songs, 
and tracked you down and decided they wanted to do a, a version of one of your songs. How, what was that like to actually get that recognition that, and who was it? That was, that was great. It was, it's actually been, um, it's been a couple of, the, the first one was a, a, um, from, from the East Coast, Wildcat O'Halloran. It's on his album, he tracked down Hate Me For A Reason. Right. Um, which, was, which was really good. Um, what happened is we were both getting played on the same radio show and somehow we sort of got connected mm. and he, he said, I really, I really like it. So I says, well, why, why don't you record it, you know? And yeah. so, he, so he did and he made a great job That's of it. It's completely it? different to mine, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, there's also um, Brooke Nickerson. Um, right. She's got uh, an EP coming out in March, um, which has got um, five of my songs on. Right. And I'm busy writing some more for it at the moment. Um, and she's, I think she's in Nashville at the moment. She's American. Right. Um, so there's five songs gone there. Um, Independence of Calling Your Name have both been licensed, all of the tracks for compilations right. uh, this year, along with. It's on compilation with people like Robert Johnson and stuff, and you know, um, uh, BB King and stunning. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, I, I, you're up there. <laughs> well, it's, it's just, um, I just, uh, I'm just a passive observer. I Are just, you going to have a plaque outside your house, like when the blue plaque? Have you got one? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I nearly got a plaque because I, I don't know if you saw the, the the video online where I had Russ Abbott playing in me. In Russ Abbott. Once. Yeah, it's on, it's online. Uh? Um, that was a bizarre day. That one. Have you not seen that? No, I don't think I have. All right, it's. Um, Okay, how's this for a strange date that just happened, right? right. Um, I was sitting in the house, I was a bit bored, and um, Kev across the road uh, phoned us and he said, Russ Abbott's knocking on your door. I went, all right then. And I could hear the door being, so I went downstairs anyway, and there's Russ Abbott. And he says, I'm Russ Abbott. I said, I know you are, but why are you knocking on my door, you know? And he says, oh, uh, like the lady across the road said, you know, you sort of play the guitar, do you fancy coming out? Right. And I thought, this is really bizarre. And it got more bizarre as the day went on because we had the whole cast of the producers right. um, all in fancy dress in our street um, and in our garden. Uh, Joe, um, he got what you think, Pasquale. Really? Yeah, um, Russ Abbott and a Broadway actor called Corey English. Right. And a gig burst out in our front garden. No which way. is there's, there's videos of it and stuff on there. It's oh, you have just, to check that out. It's just really strange, you know. Uh -huh. But it was it was a fantastic day, like you know. But um, <laughs> when I told people about it uh, on the Monday, I had to go and get some video evidence because I thought they think I've just flipped here. Nobody but, believed but it. But fortunately, it's it on there. So it? that was I nearly I nearly put a plaque up for that Did one. Did you? That's Russ, pretty Russ good. Here, you know? Excellent. Well, anyway, let's have Trevor sing here. Okay. Oh, um, Would you fancy another song? What do you fancy doing next? I do, um, I'll tell you what, I'll do one. Um, I'll do one on me blue one. All right. Um, you must have a good collection of guitars now, have you? Well, it's just that you know, we've got different uh, tunes. I have got some nice guitars, actually, I say, but, but um, uh, yeah, I've, got, uh, I've, I've still got ones that I played when I was like, like my first Les Paul, when I was like sort of 17, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. That's like, Nearly six years ago, you know, because right. I'm, I'm pushing my mid twenties now, cool. Steve. It's like proper Les Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, you must have to save up a little bit for that. Did you a few few extra paper rounds? Well, you know, it, it, what it was is I was dead lucky because my dad and and my mum as well, but my, my dad was really really supportive of us. Right. When when because when I was at school, I was like I, I was sort of okay at school until I discovered my guitar, and then I sort of lost interest in it, you know. Um, and my dad sort of spotted that. So it's like, he, he, he could tell that I really, really wanted to do it. Yeah. So he helped us get, uh, he helped us get a Les Paul, you know. You gotta love your parents for helping out, eh? Oh, uh, they, were, they were just really quite amazing, you know. It's yeah. like, um, like me, me dad really had the, the spirit of rock and roll about him. He was a really interesting bloke. He's dead funny, you know. Right. Um, so that's that's how come, and I've still got that same Les Paul, and like my dad's not here now, but Les Paul still is, and it still reminds me of my dad. Yes. All right, I'll tell you what, Dan, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody at home, DC, Coast to Coast, Boom Chang Records, Al Stephen, Paul Cunningham, Cooking in the Kitchen, Trevor Sewell, he's going to play us out tonight. Last song, what's it going to be? Uh, th this is the one that will probably be on my next album. Yeah. Um, I've, I've sort of done, uh, uh, this is one of the ones I was doing the, 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 the vocals for across in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, this one's called Small Change. Brilliant. Looking forward to it.
Just want to say I did not turn away Not like others I could name I stood by you Though I did not need to Now you just treat me like small change So much better than me. How come? How come you think you're so far out of me? How come? What's going on behind the smiles that you don't need? What's going on behind the scenes? What's going on I'm not supposed to see? What's going on in your head when you're with me? How come you think you're so much better than me? How come? Come